Evening podcast in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to the Odetta Podcast, where normal is not my specialty. I am your host, the working myself, way too damn hard, fuck I'm stupid, Adam Higgins, the Odetta out. You can find me at odddeadoutpodcast.com and on all the social media places at odddeadout. And this is the show where I normally talk a lot of shit, I make fun of some weird news stuff, and I tell you about podcasts that you should listen to because... You should be listening to more podcasts because they're just a wonderful thing to have as part of your life. But I said usually because it's the end of the month and at the end of the month I have a guest come on and talk shit with me because sometimes other people want to talk shit too. What can I say? This month I have Derek, formerly of the Sometimes Geek podcast, currently of Rolling Misadventures, and the recently launched Life World podcast. Because we're both nerds, we talk video games, we talk podcasting, I give him lots of shit about working on a true crime show. We somehow, and I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly proud of this one, I managed to create a metaphor of, of Bob Ross and podcasting. You just gotta listen for it. I think it works beautifully. We're all over the place, but that's because podcast brains are all over the place and i'm insane and you should know this by now you're listening to me sorry not sorry but (laughs) it was it's so much fun and there's a lot that came out of this i'm gonna say this right now this was a two hour conversation no bullshit this was a two hour conversation that got chopped down so there is a ton in the extended patreon version if you want to go to patreon.com slash odd out and or there's a link in at the website you know how to get there but if you are a patron at any level you get all of these interviews ahead of time and you get them uncut so you get all the bullshit that i leave on the cutting room floor i don't know why i say that it's just an old term i'm gonna stick with it but you get all of that for as little as dollar a month not pandering just saying there's a lot of stuff you miss Okay, that's the only spiel that I do. This is like the only time I really push it. Give me a break. Anyway, I'm going to stop yammering because I'm pretty sure I say that every month. And get on with more yammering with the awesome, the hilarious, my buddy, Derek Graziano. Hey, there you are. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Yay. And in my end, at least on this, it's still recording the whole thing as mm-hmm. I go. So, oh, okay. Like we were using our uh, Roll Twenty, like built-in voice app, and it fucks up at least once a recording. Mm-hmm. So we actually started using Discord and Craigbot, yeah, which will record everybody's inputs at least as a backup for syncing purposes, and multi-track, which is really surprising for a bot. I've heard that, and I've heard of it before, but mm-hmm. I've never messed with it. Oh, yeah. No, and server setup is free. Like, yeah. I set ours up, and it was no big deal. I think it allows us to have, like, 20 people in voice chat or some shit, which is way more than we need. Yeah. I mean, because it's because Discord is first a, supposed to be a gaming chat platform. Mm-hmm. So, you know, great big, oh, you're playing World of Warcraft, and you need your entire... uh Fucking what is it in there? <laughs> you need your whole raid group in there. Yeah, so that whole thing. Down. I yeah. never played fucking Warcraft. I don't I know. I played way too much Warcraft. My wife still plays, actually. Rihanna played World of Warcraft. Yeah. Yeah, Rihanna played World of Warcraft up until I bought her Cataclysm for mm-hmm. Christmas one year. And she got really pissed at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I got changed everything. And I think... Was that be- it was before or after Lich King and shit, but whatever. But I remember buying her Cataclysm, and I've got the discs around here somewhere. But we were, like, broke-ass poor at the time. And so mm-hmm. uh, most of her gameplay time came from gifts and gift cards from family. Yeah. Because <laughs> we did not have the room and the budget for her to be continuous. Like, 
We were that broke. We can't afford the World of Warcraft subscription. And eventually her account got hacked a couple of times and she was so mm-hmm. she was inactive for so long. They when they did the big purge of inactive accounts, she got wiped and she was like, oh, whatever. She's better fun. that way. Yeah. <laughs> like, but she she had like two separate incidents where her account had been hacked. Oh, shit. And so she was like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, no, I, I, I think I got hacked once. And after that, I have the physical authenticator. That if that breaks, I'm fucked. Like, I actually have to jump through so many goddamn hoops to get it removed. And then when she saw the panda thing come out, she was like, yeah, fuck this. I wouldn't keep playing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, fucking pandas. No, thank you. Like, I, I, I've heard that the game, I guess, since the purge, <clears throat> that because there are fewer people playing now, that it's a little more enjoyable. Because it's not overrun, but I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> Yeah, like I I went through phases where I played hardcore every day, took a break about Lich when that came out, hopped in because I was laid off from work and had nothing better to do, played through Kata, took a break through the two expansions after that. I finally kicked the addiction again. (laughs) And then the last expansion that just came out, uh, everybody was ranting and raving about how good it was. So I went back played basically up until the raid areas so like a month i played and i was like yeah you know what i'm good yeah and now with the classic bat like they re-released the classic world of warcraft and apparently that's jumped their numbers up back to like the old days because the old people who played in the very beginning who were like man you guys are destroying world of warcraft man man this isn't my world of warcraft and then so now they reintroduced your world of warcraft like fuck you Man, I want to play this, man. It's like I'm 12 years old again. <laughs> My wife didn't play the original. Like, she was, I think, Birdie Crusade when she started. And so she's playing it. She's rolling up a new character. She's like, God, I've been playing all week and I'm only level 10. It's like, yep, that's exactly how it used to be. So I feel about Skyrim. <laughs> yeah. But Skyrim, yeah. I, probably the worst thing to happen to World of Warcraft was Skyrim. Because suddenly the graphics are good. The It's an open world game. The story is like there's a ton of shit to do, and what's it the the dynamic mission mm-hmm. where like shit where you'll just have random encounters just so that you keep having shit to do, even if it's just a hey go clear out this bandit camp or or hey there's a dragon here, whatever. But the the random encounter element of it keeps you playing for forever theoretically, and so you got all the fun shit. And so like you can just keep playing, but, and it has a similar dynamic. And I think that's why, like when she finally sucked it up and it's like everybody's biggest bitch with Skyrim always seems to be that it's a great walking simulator. Look, dickhead, until you're like level 20, <laughs> you can't really kill a lot of big shit. And the, yeah. and the shit's kind of boring in the beginning. It's like, oh, they're just saying go here and then go there. Like, yeah, it's called a training section. <laughs> Like, it's going to make you go do a bunch of really stupid, menial shit so you can figure out how to play the game and learn shit and and figure out controls. And it's not going to do it with a walkthrough. It's going to say, hey, go kill that dragon over there. Oh, hey, then come back. You don't have to do any of the bullshit. They're just suggesting (laughs) it to you. It's called a storyline. You don't have to do the storyline. I think I played for a year and a half before I ever really did shit with the storyline other than the main shit because i was like i don't want to join a side i don't want to join a side and Mm -hmm. affect the game and so i didn't do shit i joined every other faction i completed every other bullshit thing in the game that i could it's like i'm the leader of every fucking thing i'm the thieves guild and the the, uh, dark brotherhood and and the major everything i did all of the things and the only thing i had left to do was the main (laughs) storyline because i never wanted to pick a side And ultimately, no matter what, even when I've gone through, I think I've got three different playthroughs now. Shit. And like each one, I've always ended up siding Stormcloak just because I think the Imperials are assholes. Even though the Stormcloaks (laughs) are kind of fucked and fundamentally their logic is wrong. But you never come across a group of Stormcloaks torturing and murdering somebody on the side of the road. And you happen to see that shit with Imperials and, and fucking and high elves and bullshit all the time. You're like, oh, 
like there's nothing to see here and you see like five imperial soldiers sitting on the side of the road torturing some random nord I'm like yeah no you guys are assholes so fuck you guys i'm <laughs> siding with them just because you guys are the bigger assholes in this equation that's my logic fucking video games i'm also the guy who was like oh i'm gonna be a, a hero and do all this shit i'm also a high level assassin and shit like that because uh-huh. fuck, why not now i always go at least two playthroughs one is the like virtuous i will do everything good no matter whether it's lawful or not i'm gonna follow most of the rules and then i always have my second playthrough of like no i'm going to take every evil action i possibly can but like with a uh, fallout that is one of those games where i will go back and replay multiple types of characters and one of my favorites to do is after I've already beaten the storyline, if I didn't do the asshole character, I will make a character that just kills everyone they come across, whether they give me a quest or not. <laughs> it's like one way or the other, this story is going to end because there will be nobody left. <laughs> and I've seen videos like of shit like that, or I think it's, I think it's Fudge Muppet on YouTube. They do a ton of Skyrim videos. And they do a bunch of different character builds. And a lot of them are, are dependent on you have all of the expansions and shit like that. Because yeah, like, oh, yeah. you've got the vampire thing. And now you've got the vampire tree. And somewhere in there, you've got like the necromage perk or something. I think it's like a level 100 perk. But it's like, oh, if you got this power set and then this and the necromage perk and you do this and it turned and oh, and then you have this Daedric artifact combine these things together and it basically gives you the power to slow down time kill everybody in a space bring the entire group like entire town back as zombies and then they you send them off on like fucking berserker mode and that they kill everybody (laughs) and then you just go flip 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 boom again and kill everybody and then bring everybody back until you basically turn the entire like entire game into world war z (laughs) And yeah, it's like, like, I'm do. <laughs> like you guys had way too much time to figure out how to do that shit <laughs> just saying <laughs> oh no so there used to be this guy I worked with uh he, god it was before fallout 4 so i think we were playing new vegas and we were coming up with just they weren't like op builds or anything but it was okay let's make this character and throw them into the fallout world and so he ended up making a uh, chunk from the Goonies. <laughs> and he could only use melee weapons. He couldn't use guns because he didn't understand how they worked. But he justified the use of grenades because he thought they were just baseballs. Yeah, or rocks. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're just like, throwing he, a thing is, is perfectly legit. But you're not using a mechanical projectile. <laughs> but the best part is like the game figured someone would do something stupid like that because we had like the lowest intelligence, highest uh, strength and whatnot and highest luck because it just seemed right for the build. Yeah. And so like you get dialogue options that are just like, you have no way to talk your way out of this. So it actually lets you just (laughs) like your dialogue response is just dot, dot, dot. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I've never played fallout and I think it's like, I don't play games with guns in them. Okay. Not like, and other than like, I think a lot of it just comes from, I'm not a fan of first person shooters. And, yeah, yeah. and I say, I don't play games with guns in them, but I play gun. <laughs> 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 Why? Cause it's a cowboy game. Cause like, I, I don't know my, in my brain, I don't like the like reality simulator type games, like all of the, the rainbow six and the call of duties oh, yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I've never been into that. I've always been like the fantasy guy. So mm. it was lots of Zelda. <laughs> Lots and lots of Zelda and the Elder Scrolls games were like adult Zelda. This is, yeah. this is adults version of Zelda. Okay. I can get behind this. There's dragons and there's monsters and swords and magic and all that. I can, I can do that. And then I, I grew up in the desert and I grew up playing cowboys and Indians and gun was just cool to me. Mm-hmm. And it is the most linear fucking storyline in the history of video games. And it reminded me of like, I used to play mech warrior way back. I used to oh, play yeah. Mech Warrior on my Windows 98 PC and had like where you had to pull up the MS DOS prompt to load the game. <laughs> <laughs> that bullshit. I'm like, I'm not super tech savvy, but I had to learn to figure that shit out to play this game. But 
after all of your missions and you've got the spoils and all of this stuff and uh, oh you've picked up these spare parts and you collected this and this and this and you've salvaged this new mech and i remember people being really pissed off about that because they insinuate that you're supposed to be really careful about how you destroy things and you're not supposed to blow them the fuck up you're just supposed to be trying to disable them Mm -hmm. so that you can salvage the mechs come to find out that all of the rewards are predetermined and you could just nuke everything and blow everything to dust and you're still (laughs) going to recover the exact same shit and we're like oh yeah that little piece of shit over there yeah i'm just gonna mow them down but i want that big bastard over there i want him in my arsenal like oh no yeah it doesn't matter you're not gonna recover that one jeez (laughs) Like it's predetermined, and it's like, well, then what's the fuck is the point of being careful? I'm just gonna blow shit up. I need about four more heat sinks <laughs> and bigger guns. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like that. It's like shit like that. That was the last sort of first person shit that I could play, and, and I'd spend hours on it. So like stuff like that, I got that. And gun for me is like kind of had that same thing where it doesn't matter how you play the game, your rewards are the same. There is a max amount of money you can earn in the game. There's a max amount of rewards. If you do all of the things, you will Mm -hmm. upgrade fully. But if you upgrade fully, the game is over. There is absolutely nothing left to do. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. And the last gun that you achieve in the game is in the final boss fight. And if you've done that, then the only thing you can do with that gun is run around and randomly shoot people after the game is over and you've saved it and gone back. (laughs) <laughs> and it's like a giant gatling shotgun <laughs> it looks cool it's completely useless and you can't even use it in the fight where it'd be really helpful because you get it from that asshole <laughs> God, that's so dumb <laughs> but it's either way a fun game and that last fight is a bitch <laughs> <laughs> but like because it was cowboys and indians and, and shit like that and oh you're protecting the chinese railroad workers from the Indians that are pissed off because you're building a railroad through their land or, Oh, you're working for the pony express. You got to deliver mail from here to here to here to here. And like the final pony express level is you have to get a package from like one side of the, of the world all the way to the other. And you have like five minutes to do it. It's like a relay and you've got to keep changing horses. Oh shit. And you basically have to spur your horse to the near to the point of death, then get them right to the point of death, jump to the next horse and keep going and either going <laughs> to kill your horse too fast or run out of time. And you basically have to kill the horse at every transition because you're not going to get there fast enough if you didn't push the horse hard, that hard. <laughs> Versus Skyrim where horses defy physics and can climb straight up mountains. <laughs> That's fantasy. That's just your excuse the whole time. Yep, fantasy. That's and that's again fantasy. I can do fantasy. I can slay dragons all day, but I don't want to be sitting in a game with a city environment and a gun that could theoretically exist in reality. And what was it that movie War Games or even Ender's Game where you're playing a video game? In reality, real people are getting massacred. You don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. That's everybody playing Call of Duty is actually controlling a drone soldier out in Afghanistan somewhere that we don't know about. Everybody's got like matrix chips plugged into their back of their heads and they're all connected mm-hmm. to somebody's PlayStation. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's the movie uh, Gamer. <laughs> <laughs> because everything has been done. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that's a movie. Of course it is. <laughs> Everything is a movie or a video game or a comic or a podcast or a podcast. <laughs> there are no original ideas. So what the fuck's with you? Cause I've been yammering on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> like I said, I was waiting for, like, we talked a little bit about, okay, this is the order we're doing shit. So I haven't even hit record cause I knew this was recording everything. Yeah. Cause this is just my random bullshit. Cause that's what I do. I just randomly bullshit. You should know this by now. <laughs> I know, and I'm just being the shitty podcaster who didn't hit record. But yeah, see, because I'm that asshole that I invite you on and fucking talk and talk and talk. But you are familiar enough with the show and familiar enough with my dumbass that you should know better. (laughs) 
and you've been on the show before, so you should fucking know better. <laughs> I should have, and yet here I am. As I shake my finger at the camera that's not even plugged in. <laughs> no, not much, man. Just uh, doing the podcast thing. I mean, you and I, that's the kind of the worst part about when you go on your friend's podcast. It's like, okay, yeah, we'll come on and we'll just shoot the shit and talk about whatever. It's like, yeah, we've already done that before we sat down to record. That's why I push record first. <laughs> <laughs> I push record, then I send you the link, and then I find out that my mic is muted. <laughs> because I've, I've done that before to the point where I'm like, well, fuck, I don't, if I don't push record, I end up missing good shit. And that is the lesson oh, I've yeah. heard, especially for like a lot of our friends who are who are like, oh yeah, I missed like this 30 minutes of great conversation because we didn't start recording yet. And I was like, nope, record, then call. <laughs> Because and it, I forget who I was talking to, where I was giving basically like the whole spiel. I think it was with uh, with uh, Chris and Cody and explaining the whole. I don't do an intro. I don't do any of the bullshit in the call anymore because it changes the dynamic. And if you just go into having a conversation and whatever the fuck, then we end up talking for thirty minutes about World of Warcraft and Skyrim and gun and all the different video gamey bullshit and. It just happens and it shit just flows. Otherwise, it, it, it changes the dynamic when you've got the intro and you're prepared. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, fuck. I was like, I'm prepared. What the fuck prepared? <laughs> <laughs> no, and in fairness, like, I don't think to record that because, I mean, that's my day-to-day conversation my wife and I are having anyway. Yeah. So for me, that's just a normal conversation. I'm like, well, who the fuck would want to hear that? That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> that's just what i do here it's just the bullshit shit it's the shit that and that's i still say it's like that's why i like and like having all my podcaster friends on into infinity because it's going to take me forever to get through everybody even though i'm i'm having such a hard time coming up with 30 people for one month it's also a matter of i could find 30 people Mm -hmm. am i going to have time to record all 30 people like I spent a half an hour last night back and forth texting with Gareth and Bex from Gareth's Random Ramblings, just trying to figure out timing because they're in Melbourne. And the time difference between their schedules and mine gets very complicated. And the one time where I know they're 100% they're going to be free to record is when they do their show because they do their show live Oh yeah, on what, for me is four to five ish on Saturday evenings. 99% of the time I'm at work. (laughs) Well, yeah, we ran into that. uh, Just you and I chatting. It's like, okay, let's look at our work schedules. And they are the exact opposite of each other because I work overnight and that, that, and then Mm -hmm. because on Saturday I work days. And so that's what throws everything to hell. And so it makes it really difficult for me to connect with people. And I'm fortunate enough. There are a handful of people that work from home or are in situations where I can work things out. Like I know Heather's work and life and home schedule. (laughs) I'd probably know way (laughs) too much about Heather's home work life schedule. And like, well, from this time to this time, she's unavailable because kids and husband and life and shit like that. It's like, I know these things. (laughs) But we have an agreement. We almost recorded almost the exact same time frame every time Mm -hmm. she's been on the show. And it's just like, yeah, because I know when you're available and when I'm available. And this is the time where it coincides. And she's been like, oh, no, I'll get up early. It's like, I'm not going to make you get up at five o'clock in the morning to talk to my stupid ass. (laughs) Sleep. Really? It's okay. Shit. I don't I don't even do that for my own show. I'm not going to make someone else do it. (laughs) I was like, I, I, I record in the middle of the fucking day. I was like, and that's one of those things where I, I'm looking forward to when we get our house next year, when we finally settle down and buy a house because we're aiming for four or five bedrooms because we really want me to have an office space, like a designated room to myself so I don't annoy the shit out of everybody else because I can't work and I can't do any podcasting stuff or recording when my wife is home or at least like at night when normal podcasters record overnight and like, Oh yeah, it's like two in the morning now. Oh my God. No, like at like six o'clock I'm locked out because by then where it's dinner time and all this, but then it's 
when normal podcasters are recording, my wife's in bed 10 feet away. I'm not recording shit. <laughs> like my shit's done in daytime when kids are napping. So I, I that's where, that's where, you know, like I, it'd be nice to have my own office again. And way back when I started the show, when I sounded like shit, I had my own office and it was also a great big empty room with nothing in it, but my desk and uh, bamboo floors. I had nothing yep. in that room, but my desk. <laughs> Yeah, that's basically my office. Like, I've got my wife's computer next to mine because we're nerds like that and we play <laughs> games together. But other than that, it's like, yeah, bamboo floors, fucking big ass empty walls that if I turn slightly, you can hear the echo come off of everything else because I finally sound treated directly in front of my desk. And yeah, it's it's always been that way. The one downside, though, that I realized with having this giant office is when we first moved into this house, I had a fuckload of moving boxes behind me, which apparently worked really well for sound deadening. Yeah. So as soon as I actually cleaned those up, I was like, oh, shit, this room has echo now. Yeah. Like, when I posted up the picture of my little blanket fort that I use for when I'm doing uh, voiceover recording, which I don't use for the show because it gets hot as fuck in there. Mm -hmm. But when I want to do voiceover recording like the stuff i just did for 2000 dc or any of the other parts and pieces and stuff that i've done i have like two rolling uh clothes racks and i have a couple of comforters that i basically just drape over those and across and make a big blanket box out of that and i butt that up against my desk and just kind of grab the corners and wrap them around behind the monitor but it works really well for blocking out noise and it gets to be super quiet. And I started doing some testing a while back with it and just like, okay, how loud can I get? And yeah. how does it sound? Especially like with my new pop filter, which I'm super impressed by, but like I had to turn up my volume on my mic because my pop filter was actually cutting my volume back so much. Damn. <laughs> I had to actually turn the mic straight into my face in order for it to pick up because the, the pop screen was actually deflecting enough to reduce my volume i i am like when you see musicians and shit in videos where they're like practically eating the pop screen i basically have to do that now <laughs> and like just so i i don't sound weird i guess but it's it's funny because now i can't do the weird shit like the effects of like eating the mic because there's a big mesh screen in front of me <laughs> or like uh when kate flips me shit on uh, Life World, when I get all super close and broody with the microphone to get that, my actual true crime voice. Um, yeah, it, it's the same same deal. Like, if I had a pop filter, I don't know if I'd be able to do that or not. Probably not. Yeah, no. But I was, I was doing all these testing with it. Just like, how do, like, because I, I never do a lot of the, like, weird mic shit. And then it was testing stuff like well if i turn this down and i adjust this and figure this out then i can get right up on there and i can do this thing like this where i'm right up on there with just practically you know trying to eat the microphone but then you get that weird bassy bullshitty effect thing going and it's like but it doesn't sound right it doesn't sound right i don't like it and it's like it's the shit that right they, it's the shit they do in radio too because they're like right up on the mics oh yeah but they're also right up on the mics because they adjust everything so that they don't get a lot of crosstalk so if they're like six inches away from the mic you start losing them so well and it's so funny too because uh one of the guys that is uh local to me who is a podcaster he is also on the radio and so recording with them yeah it's the same deal you have the microphone right up here and you sound super bassy and i'm totally redlining this microphone right now and it looks terrible yep uh, but, <laughs> yeah it's just like it's so hard to to break that mindset where it, I mean, my desk at home, I've got a boom arm that's actually like drilled into my desk and everything just because I'm lazy and I wanted to make it easier. And I know I can just put my mic exactly where I need it and then going to record with them and having to break everything I've logged in the back of my head is terrible mic technique. Yeah, and my boom arm, it's like a, you know, C clamped to my desk, but I thoroughly plan when I have my office because this isn't even like my desk. This is my hundred dollar cheap ass roller desk that I got when I moved out of my parents' house. <laughs> Cause when we originally moved into this house, the idea was I'm going to have a recording space in the garage and just kind of nothing ever came of it. But 
I plan on having my kind of studio space for when we get the new house because I, I want to do that. And as much as my wife rolls her eyes about me and, and all the podcasting stuff and how much I love doing podcasting stuff and editing shows and and and, and recording and doing all the shit that I love doing. She rolls her eyes at all of that, I guess, because for the most part, I don't uh, like even with the editing stuff, I don't make a ton of money and I've oh, had yeah. a huge lapse in work until recently. And so it, it's starting to make me a little bit of money. I have yet to, after four years, recoup all of what I've spent because come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I yeah, the way I look at it, because, yeah, I've been doing it for like three and a half years now. Yeah, it's I will never break even when it's all said and done, at least from where I'm at right now. But like where we're at now, just because of our Patreon supporters, it's like, okay, cool. I'm paying for my website and my hosting fee right there. That's, that's a win. As far as I'm concerned, I don't have to pay to do this anymore. Yeah. I'm still not even there. Oh, actually I have, (laughs) I theoretically, I have actually earned enough from editing podcasts in the last year to have recouped everything that I have spent on podcasting i think i didn't roll in microphones and equipment and shit in there but i'm not awful but i don't work consistently and that is over the course of a year (laughs) it took me i was like "Eh, like but we also don't do this for the money and like as far as editing my goal right now is to get enough work in editing and make enough money editing to where i can dial back at my regular job. Like Mm -hmm. if I don't have to go out at night until four o'clock as many days out of the week, and I can spend more time at home with my family and working on stuff and being productive and creative and doing this. Awesome. And also I want to take some of the money from this and invest it in voiceover training and coaching and all of this stuff to develop that and add that whole thing into my business strategy and plan and the whole everything. But it's one of those, when I was finally in a position at the end of last year, it was like, all right, I'm good now. I'm and I'm going to start rolling this into coaching and training and all this. Then the work stopped. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Oh shit. Okay. And it didn't come back until August. <laughs> I was like, okay, I had planned to schedule coaching and training sessions in the beginning of January, and all of that went poof. And all of the money from that was gone by March. Just in stuff that I was like, I because at the time I was using it for paying hosting and websites and all the stuff. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, I, I rolled it all through. I built, you know, I, I you know had to renew my website and oh, there's like another hundred and something dollars for the year. It's like, well, well shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was like, it's just for the year, but it's gone now. <laughs> there goes the last of that editing check. But now for me, for me, the mindset has always been, if I can create without having to pay to create, then that's a win for me. Yeah. So I like, yes, our hosting, our website's paid for. I still do all the editing myself. So, you know, there's, 12 to 16 hours of work every two weeks that I'm putting into every episode that I'm not getting paid for, but I get to create the thing and get it out there. So I don't care that, yeah, I'm not getting paid for it. It would be great to be paid to, you know, sit on a mic and do this. But on the other hand, it's like, well, at least I'm not having to pay to go out and hustle and try to get people to see or hear it. Yeah. It's like you're, you're not turning a profit, but you're not completely in the red anymore. And that's at least a good thing. I think my net numbers are in the black, but right now I'm, I'm fronting these costs like black Friday, you know, as they Mm -hmm. say, that's the day when stores are finally out of the red for the year, which is the, the nature, the, the origin of the name. It'll probably be that late before I'm, I'm in the black as far as costs for the year. And because I'm a shit marketer, I don't have a ton of new clients coming in and stuff like that. I also try not to push myself because I don't want to get overwhelmed with work and not be able to meet demand and run myself to death, especially when shit like, oh, I'm going to get sick and I'm not going to be capable of sitting down and getting work done because my head is exploding. So (laughs) 
Yeah, it's the entire idea of just freelancing and relying entirely on freelancing terrifies me for that. Because it's like, I know that I can go to my day job. I'm going to work X amount of hours a week. I'm going to make X amount of dollars basically guaranteed as long as I'm there doing the work. So, yeah, the idea of like hearing other podcasters like Tawny or or whoever who also freelance, like that is all they do. They freelance. I'm like, no, no chance in hell. I could ever do yeah. that. But at the same time, like Tawny is a good example of you think, oh, yeah, she's like she's a freelancer. She's a voice actor. It's like, yeah, but also start looking deeper. It's like she's also oh, yeah. a business coach and a voice coach and she records mm-hmm. demos and she's a producer and she does blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, yeah, she has to do a million and one things as all part of the umbrella of things. That is like, oh, yeah, she's a voice actor, but she also does A, B, C, D, E, like as part of the expansion of that business. She's not just a voice. Yeah, yeah. It was like, And not even just like a voice coach. She's also a business coach and things like that. And I think for me, that's where like a lot of my imposter syndrome shit comes in is the I know I'm a capable editor and it's one of those stop comparing yourself to other people because Mm -hmm. you are you and you do your thing and what you do well is what you do well. And there are probably people who do it better. And I know there are people who are much better editors than me at the same time. I could also be just sitting there with this is all in my head. I'm just as capable and skilled of an editor. And I guess like, when I see shit in the uh, podcast editors group on Facebook and you get those guys who are like, Oh, I was an audio engineer and radio and music for 20 years and blah, blah, blah. And then they just start spouting off stuff. And like, and it, on one hand, it makes you feel really inadequate. On the other hand, you're like, shut the fuck up with your pretentious. I've been an engineer for 20 years. Shit. All I ever think of whenever I hear that is the, okay, so you know how to make any sound sound like this one thing that, other audio engineers can make it sound like that's it because that's what you did for 20 years you made everything sound uniform and perfect and bc and that's yeah. it it's like oh i was a radio engineer you realize radio engineers are some of the lowest form of audio engineering because like every and like every podcaster and podcast editor knows and has heard the same shit radio over compresses the audio Yep. To normalize everything across the broadcast so that everybody is uniform. And I remember somebody was pointing it out like the same, they do the same thing in music production is that they generally over compress vocals so that it's even. But somebody was complaining about like, I want that, that music sound or that studio sound. And then they were like, well, listen to what they do in those environments and you realize like they over compress stuff to a point where the breath and the lyrics are almost the same volume. Mm -hmm. Whereas what we have to do in podcasting is almost the exact opposite. You have to almost eliminate breath noise. Like you got to sound like you're breathing because otherwise it it sounds unnatural (laughs) and you'll have clients that will say, I want all the breaths removed. Uh Uh-huh. And that's the worst part about being an audio editor, engineer, producer, you know, all the shit that we do under the umbrella of podcaster is that when I go back and listen to shows, there's shit in mind that like breaths, for example, I take very loud, sharp breaths. That's just my speaking style. But in other shows that I listen to, because I hear it so much in mine, I now hear it in theirs. And it's like, well, shit, it never bothered me listening to it in this podcast, like a uh, prime example is my brother, my brother and me. Griffin does kind of the same sharp intake breaths. And it's like, oh, yeah, it never bugs me. So why is it bugging me in my audio? Because probably no one else is going to notice it until I point it out. Yeah, it, it's it, like from what I've noticed and like when I do work with different shows. Is that when you take normal, big, deep breaths, like, you know, or the just because you're taking a big breath. And sometimes you say a lot and you go on and 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 on. I'm doing this for a reason. On and on and on and on and on and on. You have to take a big breath because you were stupid and just let everything out of your chest all at once. Or you're one of those people that that just blurts everything out and the has to come out because you weren't just 
having a big breath, you were wheezing or something, or you were like mm-hmm. being overly dramatic. But if you're just having heavy breathing, it's actually really you, your brain can dismiss that. It's when they have that yeah. really big weird fucking inhale that doesn't sound right, and so your brain catches it. Like cut that shit out. But otherwise, it, 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 you're you just filter it out. And there are some people who don't do anything with breath. But it's really one of those, if your mic technique is good, you don't notice the breathing at all. Yeah. But if you're sitting there eating the mic, you're breathing straight into it, and it sounds Mm -hmm. like uh, Wheezy from Hey Arnold. (laughs) (laughs) And There's one podcast I listened to that one of the hosts, I haven't bugged him about it yet, but I I, I really need to because I listen in my car most, either like half my listenings on my commute to work or the little bits I get at my desk that I can listen and yeah, I can hear them on my car speakers and I'm just like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> and it, like, I, I feel bad. The, I guess like when you, when you start off in podcasting, you like little things and there's, there's like the two camps. There's the people who want to be perfect right from the get go. And the others that are like, I'm going to make this thing and it's going to be great. And they start making their thing and it doesn't sound great in the beginning. And they don't notice the things that aren't necessarily great just because they don't it's the, one of those, you don't know what you don't know. Fair enough. But when you get better and you start knowing the things that are wrong in your audio and you start realizing, oh, this is bad. I need to fix this. Oh, wow. Those breaths are really obvious. Oh, I click my teeth or I kick the desk a lot or I do this thing or do that thing. And then you start learning to fix the things. Mm-hmm. But like, fine, get, get better, practice. It's the people who are like, oh, I'm going to get perfect. Well, when you get perfect, then you think you're perfect and you don't know, but you don't know what's wrong. And when you learn what's wrong and you start learning to fix and you get better. And when you grow, you start hearing it in other people's shit. When you yep. got to where, oh, I'm perfect. And you're not learning because you're not, your brain's not absorbing anymore and you're not picking up the differences. And when, so you're just like, whatever. But like, you now can listen to your early episodes and you're like, fuck, this is terrible. <laughs> God, what was I doing? I mean, both in both in editing, uh, processing, as well as just the way I do the show. Yeah. And that's the other thing that drives me nuts is when people are like, I have this, it works for me. That's great. But if I ever did that, I would have given up on everything I've done in podcasting because I've always been able to let it evolve and adapt into what it is now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because if I were still doing this show the way I was doing it four years ago, I would have quit two years ago (laughs) because (laughs) I was back in the day. I was the sit down, record everything, go back through, edit everything. I was like, there's no reason for it because I'm recording myself. It's just me by myself in my little fucking bamboo box. And I, I. There was no reason. And that's when I learned that, holy shit, it takes me three hours to record a 30 minute show Mm -hmm. and like going through. And that wasn't even like cutting out breaths. That was cutting out coughing. And oh, that sounded dumb and and cut that out and shit like that. And learning how to do all that and taking three hours to record a 30 minute podcast and like, okay, let's put the music here and don't know how to fade out music yet (laughs) (laughs) and all that. but. Like, and then go back and listen to that now. And now everything's in a template. I can literally sit down, put my cursor where I need to push record and do an entire show. And if I have to cough or hiccup, like pause, (coughs) but you know, now I stop, I take the shit out and it's like, oh, I fumbled over that thing. Or what was that again? And stop, click. What was that? (laughs) Read the article again. (laughs) It's like, what the fuck? How do you pronounce the shit <laughs> china that's in china <laughs> <laughs> like I, I don't know how many foreign cities i've just said fuck it i'm gonna say it's india <laughs> because i'm i'm not gonna pronounce this city right and i don't want to offend people accidentally versus the offending people because they don't like me doing a voice I'm sure there's a lot of rednecks who'd be offended by my show. If I, <laughs> like, I'm sorry, my default stupid voice is redneck. It's not my, okay, it's, it's not entirely my fault. But, you know, 
I don't want to offend an entire country because I can't pronounce your city. I'm sorry. I'm not going to try because I'm going to sound stupider than I do just, you know, talking. So, but yeah, it's, but now I can sit down and record a show and it's all evened out. And at the end of the day, I just have to push render. Well, and that's the funny part <laughs> about like processing and shit. Like you and I do things very differently in processing because a, you have all of yours pre-built in because it is a solo recording. You're able to do that. Like back when I did sometimes geek, I would have benefited immensely from doing shit like that. But now it's like, okay, I've got my track. I've got Charles, I've got Megan and then a guest. So I've got a multi-track edit, all of that. I've got to level each person differently. I have to, you know, cut down sections of a laughter. So you still have that feedback of, oh, they did this all together. So it is an improvised audio fiction show, but there's nothing I can really automate other than keystrokes for me. So when I tell people, they're like, okay, yeah, your episodes are about 45 minutes long to an hour. Well, how long is that? I was like, oh yeah, you know, it's about uh, 12 hours per episode. But that's also the audio drama E part of it too, is the, you got yeah. so much more post-production and sound design stuff. And that's something that I want to get into, but it also terrifies me. And I'm sure like I could do it, but yeah, that it, it is the most fun. It, it is the most fun part about editing because I've already done all the hard part. So like my, once I've found music and sound effects that I'm going to use, uh, the whole, like I've already put markers in, I know where my sound effects are going to be and my music's going to start and stop, or it's going to take a hard cut because someone flubs something and we're all laughing at them. And then we resume back into a scene and it hard cuts back in. Like the actual sound design part of it is like an hour of the work. The rest of it's just editing vocals and making it coherent. Yeah, that's the thing. And I think it's like the sound effects. And I've never done anything where like you have bed music mm -hmm. and setting the scene and that sort of stuff. And I guess I think that's where like my my recent affinity for audio dramas has come in is that appreciation for the sound design of it. Like um uh, king of silas and girl in mm -hmm. space and like i'm i know i've because of my like old school radio brain i can sit there and fade and adjust levels and this isn't quite right and 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 and, and all this sort of stuff but it's the finding and then the tinkering yeah. and the like but i know i would love to do it but i also know there's a lot of those guys and a lot of them where they record a lot of their own sound effects because it's probably easier than finding it. Like this door, oh, yeah, this door squeak um, doesn't sound right. <laughs> yeah. That's uh Travis Van Groff doing all the sound design for, you know, white vault, Liberty, yeah. fast horizon. Yeah. He does a lot of his own. And I'm like, if I started doing that, the episodes would be double what they are for me to do. Yeah. But it's like, I'm okay yeah. using the same sound wooden door creak that I've used in probably three or four story arcs at this point. Yeah, I think um, Alex from 2000 DC, I think he said he had like 50 different laugh tracks that he started with at the beginning of the season before he just was like, no, I'm just using this one <laughs> and stuff like that. But even with like that shows a sitcom, there, there's minimal sound effects and things that are part of it but at the same time it still has to be there and you know if you're if like the episode is at a football game he's got to have that crowd noise and mm -hmm. oh there it's the guy on the radio he's got to sound like he's on the radio and stuff like that and it's like that's the tricky stuff that i really want to get into but like I, when we did it for april fools and we had the operation switcheroo where a bunch of different podcasts were like swapping episodes across stuff and I remember for mine, I basically put an intro on it for uh, like with a weird conspiracy, like, oh, you know, where the like this show has been taken over by blah, 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 blah. And, and all the, this distortion and stuff. I was like, that was fun as hell for me to do just to learn to do that shit, because it's always crazy to me seeing what people do with like, oh, we're going to tweak this and tweak this. And the next thing mm -hmm. you know, you sound like Darth Vader. Yep. You know, or you have this. Yeah. Like the uh, in the most recent episode I have out as of recording this, there's a ship bell that goes off. 
Yeah. And I had to take that sound because it was two distinct dings, but they were spread too far apart. So that drove me nuts. So then I cut it and brought it down and faded it out and stretched it where I could. So you actually had the bell going ding, ding, instead of, you know, ding, ding with the full echo and everything. So Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a lot, it's a different kind of work for one, but I don't know. It's just for me, that's when everything meshes, like the story, the music, the dumb sound that I decided to put in. That's when it's finally like, oh, okay, this was my last brush, brush stroke on the painting. And that's why it's like the most enjoyable part for me because I know it's done at that point. Yeah. I was like, it's if this were a Bob Ross painting, when we're recording all the vocals and shit, that's just putting in that's that's putting in the big vague mountain in the back and it's putting in the big <laughs> vague lake it's like okay is it grass snow or 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 a vague lake and a either a mountain or just the sky in the back that's the vocals and mm-hmm. all the sound design shit and the the fading in and outs of the music and the way they they you know the how all and the, the little the the bell having to have that tight ding and getting that brought together and make when we make it all seamless that is all the happy little shrubs and happy little trees that we're putting into that painting i like this metaphor I mean, that's, <laughs> but you can't see me but i'm like sitting here fucking happy little treeing all over the damn place but that's what we do. And that's that's the best. That's the most fun part. That's why I started working as a podcast editor, because that's the fun part. The recording is easy. That's the, the that's the slap the shit on there. That's the easy part. But the editing part and the refinement and getting those little things and putting the little things together. And I was like, I want to need to put a transition here and this needs to fade just right. And it needs to overlap in a way where you can hear the music coming up, but it's not overpowering them talking because you don't want to cut them off. Or you add the little bell or you hear a bird tweeting in the background or that's the crazy shit. That's the fun stuff those are the happy little trees and our, our painting that is our podcast. And that's, that's the, that's the fun. <laughs> that's why we do this. Cause that's, that is the closest I can call myself to being creative. Cause absolutely what the fuck I do here every week is not creative. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> running my mouth for an hour. Other people might disagree, but I, I don't think of what I do as especially creative outside of, like the refinement and the assembly. And it's, it's crazy to think it's like, we do this. What? <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, it's like, I guess when we're, I think it's that when we're growing up in it and we're, we're learning to do this stuff and we learn to do the things and we don't notice that we're getting more and more complicated as we go. And it started with, I was talking and then there was some music and then I needed this sound effect. Cause why? Cause it would sound cool. Mm-hmm. It's like, I've got this effect that sounds cool. Okay. Oh, I need this too. Oh, I need this too. Yeah. It was like my brother who does all of my podcast themes. He just randomly hit me up with the, Hey, I kind of did a remixed version of your original theme. I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. I'll use it for Patreon because I'm so set in using the same theme. But then I made the mistake of playing it for my co-host and they're like oh my god this is too good this has to be our theme now i'm like oh oh damn okay it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i've thought about changing my theme and i was like but i've had this for better part it's like three and a half years mm-hmm. on the existence of the show once i found this music that was it and i've i've stuck with it but i've thought about changing it but i'm like but i don't know if it would feel right <laughs> Like, I, I don't feel like, like the energy of the show might change if I change the music. I don't know. It's like, I hear this song and I think that's it. That's the show. That's how the show starts. And I actually have it on my phone, just in my music collection. So if I'm driving home, it could just randomly pop up. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like that theme could just pop up. And the boys actually have no problem listening to it because they dig the song. <laughs> like, but it's like, yeah, I could just be there. I will say that's one of the the perks of using music from Kevin McLeod is his songs are fucking long. They're full length songs. So it's like a four minute track (laughs) and like the whole thing where I literally open with the start of the song and I end the show with the end of the song because they have those hard, definite 
this is the beginning part. This is the end of the part mm-hmm. and the way it trails off. And like, I don't do that. It does that on its own. It just sounds really cool. It's like, yeah, I guess for again, radio brain where you kind of, you start talking as it's fading out because it just kind of blends and it creates that smooth transition between them. And like those, whenever there's that hard stop thing, it always throws me. <laughs> I was like, ah, that, it's too abrupt. Ah, <laughs> chop. <clears throat> And see, and I've always done the hard stop for that. Like, yeah, during the scenes, I wanted to transition. But for for intro, outro, I'm cool with the hard stop because, you know, you have your intro. My intro actually does fade into the opening of, you know, welcome to Rolling Misadventures, blah, 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 blah. And the, the, the music um, fades as it like on its own kind of. So it's like, yeah, it, it, yeah exactly. And so that works. Cause, yeah. cause we're, cause we're neurotic and we're, we're nerds. And when you've been podcasting for three plus years, you start getting really particular and it's funny just like, cause we do this and we obsess about our stuff and then you hear it in other shows. And then suddenly a show that like a year ago or two years ago, when you didn't know nothing about nothing you listen to and you're like, ah, oh, this is great. And now you listen to it and you're like, I can't listen to this. It's <laughs> like, suddenly. <laughs> Well, that's, yeah, that's what happened with the, uh, it was episode 100 of Sometimes Geek, like going and cutting those intros from, I think like 10 different episodes over the course of the two years. I was like, holy shit, the amount my sound changed. Yeah. I, I did the same thing with, with my episode 100 and did all my intros. Granted, my intro for the show changed a lot in the first year. And so putting all those together, I was like, oh shit. Like one, this changed a lot Two. God, that sounded like ass. <laughs> mm-hmm. Episode 50, I didn't think episode one sounded so bad. But when I got to episode 100, one sounded awful. <laughs> and then 50 still sounded just as bad. You're like, what the hell? Yeah. I was like, what the hell? Oh, yeah, this <laughs> sounded great a year ago. <laughs> but yeah, and now here we are. And now we're fucking audio snobs. <laughs> God damn it. My wife still gives us shit about that because like from the get go, We've been a little bit like, no, if this sounds bad, like if it just sounds ugly, I'm not listening to it. And there were episodes of this show early on where, nope, this sounds like ass. I think the first episode she was on, I was, we were, that's where you learn about, you know, needing two mics and distance and mm-hmm. shit and good recording environment. And we were sitting in the living room and we had a single mic between us sitting on the couch and it was recording super, super staticky and it sounded like garbage. And there was nothing I could do about it because I didn't know shit about shit back at episode four. (laughs) But, you know, it's another learning experience. And like I say, I normal is not my specialty and I learn everything the wrong way. (laughs) (laughs) Like I'm going to learn how to fuck this up every possible way. Trust me, that's not how you want to do that. Why I did that. (laughs) But on the other hand, now you know how to fix it. So damn right. Exactly. It's like, I learned how to fuck this up. Now I know how to get out of that fuck up. <laughs> yep. That is, uh, that, that's like my, my total education strategy of life is I've learned how to do this by trial and error and error and error. <laughs> <laughs> but we've been bullshitting for a long fucking time. A <laughs> little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So before we wrap everything up, because we talked video games and video games are your de facto wheelhouse. That is the thing that you are known for because you did a video game show for forever. And now you do a board game show. <laughs> games are your thing. <laughs> games are my thing. Games are your, your like, look at you. You're totally a game guy. Sorry. You, you present as a gamer. <laughs> oh, totally. But you started doing another show. I did. I got talked into it. Yeah. Actually, I was doing two other shows. I just dropped one of them. Um, <laughs> like you, you took the insane. hard. You took the hard left, though. You went from gaming into true crime. The fuck, man! <laughs> I sold out. That's what it was. No, um, you kind of sold out because no, not really. <laughs> because so okay, here's here's what happened. Kate came to me. Kate, who hosts Ignorance Was Bliss. Uh, her and I have a good report and people enjoy when I'm a guest on her show. So we're like, Hey, you know, are you interested in doing a second show? I was kicking around the idea because I was doing two shows and then I stopped sometimes geek so I could have more time on my one show. 
I could do another show again. No, that's not how it works. Uh, (laughs) But basically, she said, hey, I want to do a true crime show. And I said, no, absolutely not. I hate true crime. Why would I do this? And she said, no, 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 no. It's true crime, but it's based around the Internet. And I'm like, okay, now I'm interested. It was, hey, let's focus on crimes that could have only happened because of or with the use of technology and the Internet. And I'm like, that is my wheelhouse. That is what I used to do with Sometimes Geek. And so it was a way for me to kind of do the Sometimes Geek approach where I could read a story and present facts and quotes and the whole nine. But it's still talking about the Internet and shit that I'm actually interested in. Because when it comes to serial killers and murder and bloody shit, I'm just like, eh, whatever. Yeah, been there, done that. Like, yeah. everybody and their mother and her guests from around the block have done true crime. Yeah, so basically, uh, yeah, Kate came up to me and said, okay, look, let's do the show together. We'll do it twice a month, so it's not completely overloading your schedule. And one one story you'll cover for the month. I'll cover the other one and we'll figure out like the editing and sound design shit afterwards and kind of split those duties. And I'm like, you know what, that I could actually do this. And so it's, it is what it is. We started doing life world. And I've only, I only so far listened to the, the first one that you guys dropped on the ignorance was bliss feed before I'm still very not true crimey. There's one true crime show that I listen to and it's very much a case of she's local. So I I was like, yeah, I support a lot of local shows that are out here in Phoenix because eh, they're Phoenix people. So I I listen to them. But like even with like when Kate kind of reaches back and does a more true crimey episode, I tend to like, meh, I'm less interested because it's not my thing. Yeah, I usually end up listening to like maybe half of it and then skipping it. Yeah. Because in, yeah, it's not my, it's not my scene, but our approach to it is It's not just a straightforward, like, going in and telling the story. It's more of a discussion, for one. Uh, Two, you have both Kate and I who are complete smartasses that are just going to crack jokes and make fun of dumb things. And three, it's all based around technology, which is totally my wheelhouse. So instead of, oh, he murdered his wife in cold blood, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, this is a guy who hacked telecom companies and here's how he used social engineering to get what he wanted at the age of 11, which is insane to me because I was too just, I was spending too much time playing video games to go and do shit like that. Yeah. But talking about that or lizard squad or or Steven glass and these people that are high profile that you might have heard of if you're in the tech scene, but for the most part, people don't know these stories unless you are really big into you know, cybercrime or catching up with like Krebs on security and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, all I'm, I'm not even that deep into nerdy stuff. So <laughs> like that is computer beyond my computer brain can do. I can function. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a functional nerd. I'm not a deep nerd. So like, well, and you said so much shit. There's like, Nyeow. Yeah, but on so on the other hand, we also like to keep it accessible. A lot like what I used to do with Sometimes Geek, where you could have someone, and I'll just throw Kate under the bus for this one, Kate would listen and be able to have these conversations with her kid about something happening in video games. Yeah. And it's like, because I made it accessible, it wasn't just jumping in and saying, oh, Nintendo, and here's what Phil Spencer did without going into who Phil Spencer is. Yeah, exactly. And, Things like that. And so we do that also with Life World of like uh, the recent episode that released is about the Lizard Squad attacks and talking about them DDoSing and taking down websites. It's like, okay, well, let's take a step back. Like, what is a DDoS? And like, here's an analogy for it that, oh, just imagine Black Friday of everybody trying to run into the one entrance of the mall to the point where nobody can get in. That's basically what a DDoS attack is doing. And so it's a little bit of that, but in the same breath, it's like, okay, now let's make commentary. Like in an episode that'll be coming up, we talk about uh, catfishing schemes and, and uh, I'm trying to think of the word for it, uh, just general online fraud and coercion and things like that. And turning it all around of, 
here's the steps that someone would take. And then me turning around and saying, oh, yeah, this is basically how you convinced me to do a second podcast, isn't it? (laughs) So it's it's like we still keep some of it lighthearted as well. See, that's probably the skill that you and Kate have. Yeah. Both as friends and smart asses. And that Kate, because she is, you see, uh, the not, not, not torture porn. What's the word she uses for it? In, uh, in the true porn. murder porn that she is murder porn averse. Yeah. And so for her, like she doesn't have a problem with true crime. She has a problem with the, the glorification of the gore in true crime. Cause that's always like, that's the big hook for so many people is, is the, the gruesomeness of true crime. But she's more because she's the, the psychological mind and she's more interested in, in the, the whys and the 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 detail and the technicality of it and then add in your actual computery technical yep. knowledge ness of it and then both smart assery put it together and this is going to be a whole different thing and it's technically true crime but it's also much like ignorance was bliss and it's much it's it's between ignorance was bliss and regular true crime because she's true crime adjacent, you're sitting next to her. <laughs> like life world is between ignorance was bliss and traditional true crime. <laughs> yeah, she's basically a step away. I'm about three steps behind that. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. But that's it's, it's it is that's the thing is where when I don't have the full depth of it, and when you guys come on and I talk to you guys, I'm like, oh. So that's way different than what I originally thought. Now I need to listen to this more versus the, oh yeah, it's like this, it's like true crime, but it's, it's like technical and internet based and like white collar stuff. Like, oh, still true crime, meh. Like, oh wait, well, hmm. And oh yeah, you guys are smart asses. Maybe I need to listen to this. (laughs) It's like, maybe I need to listen to this now. And so that's, and it's, that's, that's, that's why I like talking to people about their shit because it's easier to get an idea about what it is you're doing. And that's what I hate about, you know, like, oh, describe your thing and describe your show. And it's like when you read a description of a podcast or of, of a, anything, a movie, whatever, you never really, you can't get it. But when you have somebody describing it to you, and I think that's what I try to do with all of my features is describe it in a way so that you have an understanding of what the show is, because you're not going to understand it by reading it. You're not a little blurb describing what it is or a quick summary of what the thing is. You're not going to get it. And it's probably not going to hook you unless you're just one of those people. Oh, another true crime. Yes, yes, yes. This is like where you follow a genre (laughs) and you'll grab on and you'll try all of them. And like, you'll try 50 and eliminate three because you know, man, she sounds snooty, but other than that, but like I, I need the depth, and I think most people need the further understanding because there's eleven billion podcasts out there, and and about seventy billion of them are, are true crime, and so you got to you got to have a way to filter them out, and you got to have a way to understand what it is you're going for because if I have no clue what it is, I really am going to have a hard time taking the dive and trying it out. Oh yeah, and, and I'm totally the same way. Like when it comes to, I I. I typically will go the other way with it, where if someone says, oh, it's true crime, I flat out just write it off. Bye. There's no, that's not a genre I go for. Uh, you know, solo guy talking into a microphone about his life and his kids and stuff. Totally not my style until someone bugs me and says, hey, you should probably listen to this because he's actually kind of an asshole and it's really <laughs> funny. And I'm like, all right, cool. I'll give it a shot then. <laughs> yeah. See, that's that's my problem is that the descript like that's where my my elevator pitch now for the show is my intro. And they, they kind of just merged into one thing that I probably went two years without being able to describe this show. And it, it kind of became like the Dave Jackson thing where you give the summary of here's what the show is. So, you know, if this is your first time listening, here's what you're coming into. Like I do this, this is this. This is what the show is about. Mm-hmm. I I talk shit. I make fun of weird news and I tell you about podcasts because you should listen to more podcasts. And if you're willing to accept the fact that I have three incredibly disjointed elements of this show, all, all just glued together by my smart assery. Fine. But there's little 
in any description that I can provide, like written, that's going to encompass the fact that 90% of the this show is my personality bleeding through all of the bullshit. And it's me bullshitting for however the hell long. And I hate to say it, but basically the entire point of the show is me. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's like the whole is like the other shit is just stuff for me to talk about, but this is just me bullshitting. And if you can't deal with that, and if that's not going to be your thing, fine, because really I'm going to own up. It's a hard draw. <laughs> it is a hard, <laughs> it is hard to, to bring people in. It's like, oh, this is why you should listen to my show. It's me talking a lot of shit. You got a, anything better? <laughs> well, and it's like uh, Sarah Warner for, uh, who does Girl in Space. One of the things that she said very that I heard very early on after starting uh, Rolling Misadventures is that, it, as she puts it, my show is not for everyone, and that's okay. Yeah. And, it, and it's taking that to heart to be like, okay, but it's what I want it to be. So. Yep. That's what I need to be okay with. Cool. If you're not okay with your show, then why are you doing it? You got to make yeah. it for you and you got to enjoy doing it at the very least. Because if you don't, then well, fuck, what are you doing? I enjoy sitting here being a smart ass every week, but I know there are lots of people who don't. Okay. Have a nice day. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Come again. Oh, sorry. That's offensive. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm an asshole. What do we, you've said it. I've said it. It's it's. If I could put it in the iTunes tags, asshole, I would. But you get flagged for that. So, <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing. You gotta love what you. And I fucking did a fucking. I did an episode. I've done an episode about everything. God damn it. I have done an episode about every stupid fucking crazy thought I've ever had. I have an episode. Love what you do. I have an episode. Podcasting is a drug. Is an addictive virus. I did this. I think it's episode 22 or 23. I had to go look it up and listen back to it, which actually doesn't sound awful, by the way. That one actually doesn't suck. And I listened back to that. I was like, I could just remix this and clean up the audio and redrop it now. And every fucking thing I said still rings true. I really mm -hmm. kind of want to do that one because when I listened to that, that was probably one of my favorite episodes from the very early days. And like I said, it's like episode 22 or 23. And the only reason I went back to find it was because I was having a conversation with Steph Fuccio and, some, and we were talking about how we're addicted to podcasting. I was like, I've done that show. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it was like Emily from the story behind hasn't done an episode on coffee yet. And she jokes like, but there's so much to do. I was like, yeah, I know I did that show. <laughs> I was like, I did an entire episode focused on coffee. I've done an entire, like back in the day, I just picked a show a topic and it's like okay i'm gonna research some shit and i did a whole research episode on coffee i did i would research shit back in the day because i didn't know what the fuck to talk about too much work too much work <laughs> <laughs> fuck research but i did so many like i'm talking about this weird topic why because i needed something to talk about more mm -hmm. a thought came to me but you can't sell that <laughs> <laughs> that's the bitch about this show is i can't market this for shit because asshole guy talks a lot of shit about shit is really hard to market <laughs> i don't know you just make it like adjacent to old man yelling at clouds and just spin that into asshole <laughs> yells about stupid people you could get in following with that it's funny that's how natalie and i kind of uh came to be friendly aside from kate suggesting that i go on her show because technically i am some kind of brown but she started binging my show and looked at the description of it and how i talk about dumb criminals and stuff like that and described the show as being true crime and i'm like i don't think i've ever been accused of being a true crime podcast before no, not at all <laughs> like but now that I think about it, there are elements there when you talk about dumb criminals. So like, like the fact that I do, in fact, go through the news and sometimes there's stupid criminals that I sit there and I talk about what uh -huh. pe dumb people are like, yeah, you know, it's 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 more adjacent. It's further out. You know, I'm the next <laughs> exit down after you've passed Kate. But uh, yeah, maybe uh, maybe I should do that. I should just start tagging everything true crime because what the fuck? It's it's there's crime. <laughs> As long as, there's, as long as there's a dumb criminal story in it, it is technically true. Yep. Crime. Like next week, downloads up, 
five hundred percent. Next thing, got two thousand <laughs> downloads on a fucking episode where I was talking about uh, golf shoes. I'm like, why? Because there was one stupid ass criminal in the new <laughs> in the new segment that got tagged through crime. <laughs> Because tagging at comedy gets me nothing. <laughs> I don't know. We get comedy fiction now that there's like all the new iTunes shit. Uh, yeah, we're up there. I think we're in the top 50 or something like that. And I have no idea how the hell we manage that. <laughs> I don't even <laughs> rank in the States, but that's also because comedy is a flooded category. Now we get we get l- weird little spikes because we have apparently have someone in Sweden, someone in Norway, uh, and then someone in Canada, for some reason, just started listening to us because I'll see it just tick slightly. I'm like, oh, OK, our Canadian listener listened to one episode. Or, <laughs> yeah. Hey, that one guy in Norway is now listening to the newest episode. Hey, Sven, uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> but the best part is looking at it the next day because I get the chartable emails each day. And I'm looking at it. And it's like, oh, apparently we pissed off Sweden. We dropped like 50 places. <laughs> like he unsubscribed a like hard he uns- <laughs> he took his past downloads away somehow <laughs> he told all of his friends to, un- down- to unsubscribe to <laughs> they weren't even there i don't know what the hell happened <laughs> <laughs> but before we wrap this up tell my listener you out there right now who is listening where the hell all the fucking places we can find you Yeah, so you can listen to Kate and I talk about internet-based true crime with an asshole slant and just general discussion commentary at lifeworld.podbean.com or by searching for Life World on wherever you're listening to this. Uh, Also, if you want to hear me and my co-hosts create improvised audio dramas and with a while we play tabletop games, as well as with guests from your favorite shows as well, we've done episodes with uh people from dungeons and dragons bombarded we've brought them on to play weird dumb short stories like a horror in the woods running from a killer sasquatch a murder mystery on a boat to a gay cowboy soap opera western kind of all over the place uh but you can search for that by going to rollingmisadventures.com or wherever you're listening to this just search for rolling misadventures you do have to subscribe because, in all honesty, if you got it through Adam's podcast, I would be a little concerned. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, I've got more stuff in the pipeline I can't really talk about. But, uh, yeah, if you just follow me on Twitter at our misadventures, the letter R, misadventures, uh, you'll see other stuff pop up as well. Of course, because, you know, it's like a bingo card in podcasting. Links in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> Click like, subscribe, smash that motherfucking like button. Fuck that. <laughs> Goddamn YouTubers and their <laughs> fucking like button. And smash that bell and kiss my ass. <laughs> I say that. The show does pop up on YouTube, but fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we mentioned I'm an asshole. But thank you, Derek, for coming on. Because, again, because of the fact that the last time you were on was actually last November for National Podcast Post Month. And you're going to be back again for that coming up in November because, like I've been talking about, I'm getting a bunch of you fuckers out here. I say out here like you're coming to my house or something. I'm trying to put together 30 people for 30 days of podcasting in November. I'm getting there, but I sure shit need a lot more. But I will have you, <laughs> I will have you back for... Na na pod pomo for National Podcast Post Month, which is a fucking lot easier to say than the fucking thing. It's a lot it easier is. to it's a lot easier to say the long way than the short way. But I have you back on for that talking podcasting like we didn't just do that. But <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it just happens with me. That's what we talk about. So yeah, but remember, you can subscribe to the show at oddadoutpodcast.com. You can find me on all the social media places at Odd Dad Out and of course in the Oddballs Facebook group links to all that of course in the show notes and until next week my Oddballs thank you and good night Tell 
my listener. Where, Paul, where you can... Oh, I thought I was just going to talk to I'm myself. Basically, it's you and Paul and Chris. That's really it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to I have to throw all of you in there because last time I singled out Paul and Chris got mad. So. <laughs> <laughs>